Donnie Darko, first requested to me by Maximum Chromosomes and written and directed by Richard Kelly, is a 2001 thriller film that follows Donnie Darko, a teenager that feels like an outcast in his community and within his own family. One night, Donnie is visited by a strange rabbit named Frank that tells him the world is ending in 28 days. From there, Donnie attempts to grapple with some struggles related to mental illness and also tries to figure out whether Frank is telling him the truth or not. As Donnie attempts to make sense of it all, he must first face his inner demons. All right, so Donnie Darko is a film that I hadn't seen before this request. I did know that Jake Gyllenhaal was in it and I knew that it had a weird rabbit in there somewhere and that was about it. For some reason, I did you know, hold the misconception that this was a dark horror movie and it's really not. I mean, I think you could call it a thriller, but I think it's more apt as a psychological thriller than anything else. The reason I throw the word psychological in there is because this movie is trippy as fuck, to put it lightly. This is one of the most ambiguous films I've ever seen because there's really two major ways you could interpret the events of this film, and they both make sense based on the evidence presented. Donnie Darko is one of the most apt films for an explained video. I watched a few Donnie Darko explained videos before I even started this review because I just had to wrap my mind around what actually happened in the movie. But the crazy thing is, I didn't mind it. I actually loved it. The ambiguous method of filmmaking is generally hit or miss for me in simple terms, but I feel like it's a hit when the story and the characters provide something I haven't seen before, at minimum. It's packaged in a new way in this film, and I don't think there's another film I've seen that's like Donnie Darko, and that combined with this ambiguity fascinated me. When the credits rolled, I feel like I needed to go and watch explain videos to understand what I had seen, and that to me engaged me beyond just a simple two-hour film. Sometimes I get really frustrated with how nothing is answered in films, but Donnie Darko is not one of those cases because the answers are there, you just have to pay really close attention to them. And by the answers, I mean the answers to two possible interpretations, but nonetheless, they are there. This feels like an extremely cohesive script that feels like it always has a clear idea of where it wants to go. A vision is extremely important when you're telling a story, and this vision feels solid and clear, always. The performances are also really good. Jake Gyllenhaal is as good as ever in this film as he plays Donnie as a very troubled, rash character that's struggling pretty mightily with some mental health issues. His character is always compelling because you never know what he's going to do next. You don't know for sure whether he's on this important mission or whether he's struggling to cope with reality. He's not typically a likable character, but he is one that feels authentic. He has inner demons and those inner demons manifest themselves in situations or forms and it makes him a compelling drama character. That's always unpredictable, like I mentioned. There's also other good performances in this film, though. Donnie has a girlfriend played uh, by Jenna Malone named Gretchen, and she's an interesting character in her own right, so is Donnie's sister, played by his real sister, Maggie Gyllenhaal. This film juggles a lot of different tones pretty excellently, and those characters I just mentioned play a part in that. There's coming-of-age slash teenage aspects to this story. There's thriller slash sci-fi creepiness, there's mental health issues, there's family drama. There's a lot here that works because of the clear vision and the authenticity of those characters. I can't say enough good things about those two aspects of the film. I think if you're looking at the technical aspects of Donnie Darko, I think you do see a film that looks like it was made in the early 2000s. I mean, the cinematography, the clothing, the way the characters interact, it just has that 2000s movie vibe to it. This never bothered me though, because I don't feel like Donnie Darko is a lesser film by any means due to how it looks. This is because the story is told so thoughtfully and decisively. There's an identity to it, and it's not shy about it, and I love that. I love that the film embraces the norms of the genres it plays to, and then in other moments diverts from those norms and establishes its own identity. I think the perfect balance is struck between the old and the new, resulting in a film that is always compelling and always engaging. And with that said, we're actually going to do something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to give you guys the pros cons rundown. Then after that, I'm going to actually give you a brief spoiler section for this video. So please stick around after the pros cons if you want to hear some spoilers discuss. But as for the pros cons, for the pros, Daddy Darko delivers a unique vision, great performances, tons of compelling ambiguity, and constant engagement. And I don't have a con for this movie. I loved it. I'm going to give Donnie Darko a 10 out of 10 and highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already. All right, so this is your one spoiler warning. If you haven't seen Donnie Darko and you don't want anything spoiled for you, please turn back now. You'll be cast to the Shadow Realm. Okay, so let's move forward. That's your one warning, like I mentioned. So after watching a few Donnie Darko Explained videos, I feel like I've become enlightened on Donnie Darko. There are two ways to interpret the film. Either he has a mental illness and his sense of reality is completely gone, or he's dealing with alternate dimensions and time travel. To me, I accept the alternate dimensions and time travel option because it's more interesting. It seems like the jet engine caused a rift in the you know, real world, or a rift, whatever the word is, they created in alternate reality, whereby things are unstable and ready to collapse the real universe in 28 days. 
Donnie then needs to return the jet engine back to the real world within that time, or the universe will basically implode. Donnie is hesitant because he's likely aware that doing so means he dies alone, which is one of his greatest fears that he mentions a few times in the movie. But Frank, the rabbit, is a subconscious ghost that is there to aid Donnie in his mission to set things right, and in doing so plays a part in Gretchen dying, which is the motivating factor for sacrificing himself and saving the world and putting it all right again. That's the gist of it in my eyes, but there's also an argument to be made that Donnie has no sense of reality due to his mental illness, and the whole thing is just in his head. I would accept that, but as I said, it's more interesting with the time travel bit. But either way, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts in the comments below because this is a mindfuck to the 10th degree in movie form, so please let's discuss it together. Either way, this is Wolfoxification signing off. I'll see you guys in the next review.